Dave here in the editing office, new to you fishing, northern headquarters. How to catch more fish, right? Had some problems this year. It was a very difficult year, and I thought during the summer I'm going to do some analysis of my fishing history to see if I can learn how to improve my results. And like any engineer, the way you do that is you make a spreadsheet. And so I've done that. I've had, I've been keeping a fishing log, but I never turned it into a, a data, uh, that raw data into any information. And that's obviously what you need to do. You need to take data, turn it into information that you can then make decisions on, uh, just like any kind of a situation that you're faced with. So I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I, I built with a, a little database tools. This is not for novices, probably. Um, and I've also been thinking about how to share this in a uh, broader way. Um, I learned some very interesting things about my fishing, and I also learned some very interesting things about Excel and how it works. And uh, although I'm using Google Sheets, same thing. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, not talk about it. We'll try to minimize the numbers and look at a lot of graphs. And from that, I think we can learn some things about our fishing in the past and apply that to how we want to fish in the future to catch more fish, right? That's really the goal and the objective. And like anything, uh, you usually get better at it when you measure it. So if you're not measuring your fishing, it's kind of hard to know, are you getting better? Are you getting worse? Are you about the same? Is everything the way it was or is something changed? And without data, you can't do that. So. Uh, let's dive in. Let's look at the data. I did a little research on this subject before I dove in, and there really is not that much information about how to do a recreational fishing log in any meaningful way. There's a lot of commercial fishing research, but not a lot of recreational fishing research. And uh, there's a couple of YouTubers that have um, fishing logs uh, that they've shown how they keep their log and what their log showed them. There's one, one gentleman who sells a, a database tool in uh, Windows, it runs on Windows, uh, he gets 20 bucks for it, but I, everybody's fishing situation is unique. And I think there's some unique things about mine and there's unique things about his tool. And uh, uh, there's uh, another one I saw, there's only two or three out there. So I think this is a fairly, new area um, to explore and um, one of the things that I saw was a lot of reliance on numbers and not so much on graphs and my experience with uh, working with a lot of numbers and spreadsheets is there's only a certain number of people that can work that way you've got to have graphs and so I focused mine into a very graphical uh, method of displaying the results. And I think that goes a long way towards uh, sending messages and, and giving you information, not looking at a table full of numbers. Right? All right, that's enough intro. Let's dive into the, uh, the data and uh, take a look. All right, welcome to my new to you fishing log. So let's take a first a look at what is the data input? What do I record when I go on a fishing trip? Well, pretty simple, month, day, year. I have started working with a, a new data element. This is the Florida Wildlife Commission has in their FWC app a recommendation on how good a fishing day are you, is it gonna be? Um, I, and I believe that their algorithm uses um, moonrise, moonset, sunrise, sunset, and then determines what are the, is it gonna be a one star day where it's not worth going or a five star day where you better go or else. And um, I'm working with a rep at FWC to download the history of that, their rating for a particular day because I wasn't keeping track of it. They do publish it 30 days into the future but so you can plan a trip but they don't have the historical data online and I'm trying to get it. And I think I can learn from that. I don't track wind speed, water temperature, wind direction. I may do that in the future, uh, but I haven't been doing that and I may need to start. 
um, I tracked, did I fish or did I not fish? And on days when I did not fish, I also track, was the reason I didn't fish because it was too rough and or weedy. Uh, we've had a growing problem on the Treasure Coast uh, with weeds, both slime weed and sargassum weed, and uh, it's really impacted the fishing greatly. And uh, so I wanted to see if there was some correlation there between the, the weedy conditions and uh, uh, my fish catching, and I, I think there is, but I'll explain more later. I do keep track of the location. I'm showing you my locations. It's not a big surprise uh, if you live in the Treasure Coast uh, area uh, what you'd learn there. I do track start and end time. Whoop start time and end time and the trip duration uh, that I and the system calculates duration I do track the tide and so all that data you really need primarily one entry um, sometimes I do bounce around to multiple locations in a day so I may have multiple entries there um, and then you're just tracking what did you catch and what did you catch it on so here you can see my results for uh, December 11th, 2020, sorry, October 11th, 2020, I caught two bluefish and a ladyfish and a jack on fish bites to shrimp. So that's obviously what I was using that day. Next day, uh, ladyfish on some hard plastic. I was fishing out of the kayak in a different place and had some different results. So I've been doing this log for about two years now. And, um, I start it's enough data I can start to see some trends so let's just take a look at another spreadsheet that does some quick summarizations and uh, and then we'll dig into the graphical results uh, because I think that's more interesting actually so another calculation is done fish per hour right you total up how many fish you caught on a day and what's the fish per hour rate that you're catching um, and then this is color coded to show when I'm having a good day. So if I'm catching 5.6 fish per hour, like I did on that day, uh, versus a day where I only catch 0.33 fish per hour, that's uh, uh, quite a different result. And then I do segregate out target fish because you catch a lot of fish that aren't really what you want to catch. And um, you know this gets at why do people fish and some people fish just to fish. I actually fish to catch. And um, so I'm really trying to target specific kinds of fish. And I want to not sp spend my time fishing but not catching, to be honest. Because uh, I do have other things that I'd like to do with my life. So, and then there's a tally section. It's all automated, essentially. So now let's uh, look at some more summary data. The top couple rows here are summaries by year and so you can see that what I mentioned 31% um, of the days that I didn't fish in 2021 it was too rough or weedy but that's grew to 73% of the days it was too rough or weedy uh, in 2022 so far and uh, that's that's a problem I think so you've you've seen the uh, fish per trip, target fish, um, and color coding on that. By the way, this bottom section is all the same data, but it's in terms of uh, by month. So each row is a separate month, and this starts to show some interesting trends as well. Um, and by the way, just to point, just to point out, I, I have to make sure I show this to Jeanette again. I don't fish every day. Right? She thinks it's 99, but it's really not, right? It's 39, 59, or 50 um, over the last couple of years. So I think 50% is about right. Uh, anyway, let's stop there and let's now get into some of the charts. All right, we've moved over to one of the other tabs of the worksheet. I call these my productivity charts. On the left side, you see the data represented by year. On the right side, you see the data represented by month. Uh, in this case, it's the showing in the blue line is the percent of days that I've gone fishing. 
and then the red data point above it is the number of days that I've gone fishing. So percent and number sometimes can be a little, uh, you have to check that to make sure you're not being thrown off. And you see that when there's a low number of fishing days and it could be a very high percentage or a, a low percentage. So this is where I mentioned before, you know, I'm fishing around half the days. Um, and uh, that, to me, I think that seems about right. Uh, I don't want to fish every day. I don't want to fish not at all. Next chart. On the days when I did not fish, was it too rough or weedy? And here it is both in terms of percentage and the number. And this correlates to exactly what I think those of you on the Treasure Coast have experienced. We've had a lot more roughness in 2022 and a lot more weediness. And I talked to a couple experts on that. Uh, Dr. Judd over at the uh, Florida Coastal Center, and he says it's not going to get any better, actually. Um, which is sad. Now, I do keep track of do I get skunked? And if I'm going fishing and getting skunked less than 10% of the days that I'm fishing, I call that green. Um, if it's between 10 and 25%, yeah, okay, I'll tolerate that. But if I'm getting skunked more than 25% of the days that I go fishing. You can see in 2021, I got skunked 28% of the days I went fishing, and that was 34 days. And, you know, that's a lot of time. And I noticed that, and I started to do some things differently um, in 2022, and I think that's part of what's helped bring that number down. Even though it's been rough or weedy uh, quite a bit, I've brought down my number of skunk days. All right, here's the... An, the productivity of, of catching. So the blue line is the number of fish per trip. Uh, and you can see I, in 2020, it was over four. In 2022, I'm below two. And so I think this is a trend in the wrong direction. So although it is total fish, um, it's not target fish. And that's where I, I probably should make a chart and show target fish because it's a little bit different. Um, average trip duration. Again, there are some people that go all day. They're eight hours, 10 hours, you know, they're out there at sunrise and they come home at dinner time. And uh, some guys fish at night as well. I've got other things I wanna do in my life. And so two hours, two to three hours seems about right for me. And um, I think one of the keys is when you know it's not gonna be good, cut it off and uh, go home early. Uh, but you can see there's been a, a decline in my fish caught per hour rate. That's the red line, even though I'm spending as much time fishing. And so that's also part of what prompted me to do some analysis here to dig into this a little bit more. Now, target species. So here's a quick summary of target species. Let's take a look at the by month chart over on the right. Um, you know, if you're catching a target species only 10% of the time. To me, that's the threshold for calling it red. That's not good enough. Um, so anytime I'm below 50%, I'm calling that orange, right? You got a few months where I've been below 50%. Uh, between 50 and 75%, I'm calling that yellow. And then if I'm catching more than 75% of the fish that I'm catching are the target species I want to catch, I'm calling that green. So, you know, I'm looking at almost half the months that I've fished, uh, I'm catching more than 75% target species. And, you know, there's some good numbers, 59 fish, 21 fish, 34, 27, 22, 33. So it's a decent number of fish as well, not just uh, the percentage. All right, let's go on to another chart that's probably something you might have wanted to take an interesting look at. This is a Pareto chart of the species that I'm catching. On the left, you see a, a traditional pie chart. On the right is kind of a tally chart. Uh, this is, I have this data by year, but this is over the entire duration. So here's a bad one, right? 
9% of the fish that I'm catching are catfish. It's bycatch. Uh, I'm certainly not trying to target those. Uh, although sail cat is on here, and I, I do like a sail cat now and then. There it is. Caught a couple of those the last couple of years. But the number one fish that I've caught in terms of count is uh, mackerel. Uh, 90 of those. Here's pompano, 88. Bluefish, 74. Uh, certainly don't have Jack Crevel on my target list either, but um, end up catching a lot of those as bycatch. Another item to take a look at, where are you fishing and how productive are each of those locations? So uh, I do keep track of that as well. You can see in 2020, I only fished half a dozen beaches and locations. I added a few more in 2021 and added a few more here in 2022, but I didn't go back to some that I probably should have because I noticed when I, I plotted this, I've got Bob Graham Beach here, um, has the highest catch rate of any beach that I've gone to, but I would uh, one of the things that's happened to Bob Graham Beach is it's one of those, uh, there's a famous Yogi Berra expression. It's so crowded, nobody goes there anymore, right? And uh, this is true about Bob Graham Beach, and Tiger Shores is kind of getting that way as well. Uh, I have avoided going there because it typically has been so crowded, but I probably need to think about going back there at, at the right time uh, and seeing if I can take advantage of the what appear to be some fairly good results that I had there. Although that was primarily in 2020, right? And so I need to think about that as well. I also went to Hobe Sound Beach quite a bit earlier this year. The conditions at my local beaches weren't as good. And so I ended up going there. It's a bit more of a drive for me. It takes me a little longer to get there, but uh, you can see I did fairly well at uh, 3.4 catches per trip when going there. But when you look at this graphically, you can see my predominant place I go is my local beach, which is uh, South Hutchinson Island uh, by the Marriott and North End, which is also the South End of Stewart Beach. And uh, that's worked well for me. So here's the data in the above chart, catches per trip by location by year. Uh, and so the overall bars are the ones that you focus on. And you can see I do well where I fish locally. Uh, over those three years on all those trips, I've averaged two and a half fish per trip. Um, there's the Bob Graham that I've been to a few times. I have started going to Normandy Beach as well, over here down out on the right end. Um, and I have done did pretty well there earlier this year as well. Uh, next thing we should look at is, well, what it you're catching fish, but what are you using to catch fish and what can you learn from that? So here's a little uh, data table by year and here it is summarized graphically. You can see that the primary bait that's doing the most catching for me is um, fish bites. Now there's also a column on here, fish bites with shrimp. I have tried fish gum. I don't find it to be that much different than fish bites and I tend to like the fish bites a little more. Um, and then we've got mackerel trees and spoons um, are other predominant things that I use. I tend not to use that much live shrimp. And by the way, these shrimp over here are all dried shrimp. Uh, I should probably make a note of that. I don't use cut mullet or cut bait that much as well either. Um, maybe something I should consider more of. So then the next logical question is, well, what are you catching? And so this is an interesting chart I did. So you can see pretty clearly I kept track of the target species. So here's my list of target species in, in row 48. Pompano, mackerel, bluefish, whiting, and croaker. Those are the target species that I, I uh, look for and intentionally try to catch. And so here you can see something like um, on the mackerel tree, I've caught 88 mackerel um, and six bluefish, and I've also caught four or something else's uh, on that. Compare that to a spoon where I've caught 
bluefish on a spoon, that's the only target species I go after that I intentionally try. That's what I try to catch when I use a spoon. Uh, but I have caught 15 other things with bycatch. I'll include snook in that list. And you might say, well, why isn't snook your target? Um, I don't pay for the snook permit. And I might consider that in the future because I have done pretty well on snook. So here it is graphically. Um, you can see, if you look at this, this is the overall number of catches by species by bait type. So if you want to catch mackerel, use a mackerel tree. Right? That's the message there. That's the green. The bright green is the is the uh, is the mackerel tree, and you can see nearly all the mackerel I've caught have been on the mackerel tree. And you can see fish bites and fish bites with shrimp shows up a lot, and including is the bycatch. And to me, the the message here is fish bites really work. And um, I know there's some people that frown upon them, but to me, they're so much easier than handling fresh shrimp or other live baits. And um, you, know, you can store them in the freezer. They keep forever. And they're easy to handle. They don't stink. And um, I really like them. Uh, here you can see bluefish primarily caught on the spoons. Right? You can catch blue bluefish can be caught other ways. You can see that uh, on here as well. But the primary way you catch bluefish is on a on a spoon. Let's take a look at one a couple more charts here. Um, this is looking at tide. So I'm tracking the different levels of tide and I use the predominant level. We've got outgoing on this end and on this end we've got high to outgoing. So it goes outgoing, outgoing to low, low low to incoming, incoming, incoming to high, high, and then high to outgoing. And I guess I always knew this, and this is what I always was told, that if you want to catch the target fish, don't go at low tide because the water's just not deep enough, right? And in the places, the kind of fishing that I'm doing, uh, go at the other tides. And I think this is confirmed by the data here outgoing to low tide, low tide, and low to incoming tide all have the lowest catch rates per hour. Highest catch rates per hour are incoming tide and high to outgoing tide. So, you know, tide coming in and uh, and then high tide maybe just on the outgoing side of it. So that's clearly sending a message on when it's worth fishing during the day. And I, I do tend to follow that and the data shows it, right? Um, I will insert the FWC star rating. You know, as I said, they rate every day a one to five star day. And uh, I'll start plugging, I'll, I'll analyze that data and plug that in. That I expect to be quite interesting. So that really sums up what we've got. Now I've thrown in another little uh, trophy room here. These are all my personal bests uh, with a photo for most of them, Jack Creval permit. Uh, black drum, uh, bluefish, Spanish mackerel, pompano, and I actually added glass nose. The glass nose is a fantastic fish, and uh, I never thought of keeping track of a personal bass, but I did catch one early this year, and, and boy, was it tasty. So, um, and you can check out my video on glass nose bait or delicacy. I know a lot of people use them as baits. So that's really a, an, a summary of what we've got uh, in the fishing log. If you found this interesting and you'd like to understand more about how it works and uh, what we might be able to do and how you could you could do it, I have no problem sharing the spreadsheet with you. Uh, the, there are a couple things that make it not fully automated right now. Uh, so I am doing a couple things manually, but I'm going to work to get rid of that so that anybody could uh, simply, you know, use this data entry form and uh, plug in the, f take two, three minutes per day, and then it would generate all the charts automatically. And so I think that might be uh, something that would be very appealing for a lot of people. So um, 
thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this video, a little, little different this time, and uh, make a fishing log. I think you'll find it could help you. Bye now.